Rise from the dead, all my fellow future outlaws, as this is Card Games vs. Humanity, and I am that NAKKWG. Back with your weekly recap of the monsters that love dueling, surrounded by people whose hairstyle could never be possible without a full bottle of Aquanet. And I'm sorry, by heading in today's recap, none of you stand a ghost of a chance of making it out of this episode alive, so yes, you better count your raws before they hatch. As the episode begins with a recap of last week's episode, which is really setting the bar low for a recap because they basically just showed the entire scene between the Big Five and Pegasus. I mean, naturally, it'd be disrespectful to mention a single thing about Mokuba stealing that kid's deck, which ultimately left to him being kicked off the island about 30 minutes later. Nah, let's forget that shit. Kimo's hair is at maximum height at the beginning scene of this episode, spending a full 30 seconds claiming that this man that looks like Kaiba is actually a ghost, even though he never actually explains how that's really possible. How will you give it to her? It's not him! You know you're an overconfident protagonist when the writers only give you two words to defend your get- What the fuck? Who is that? It's not him! Yugi claims that this person is nothing more than a fake, a trick by Pegasus, which is something I genuinely can't believe was a line that was said by Yugi first on the show and not Kaiba. Pegasus is lackey seems to be the only person freaking out how no one's explaining how a fucking ghost is dueling right now. But according to the white-haired devil himself, all of this is just a lesson to show Yugi the power of the Millennium Items, something we dare not explain at all. Then fake Kaiba says to himself the same thing that Mark Zuckerberg says to himself every morning in the mirror. I am no longer of this world. Mokuba is very upset that this imposter keeps saying all these horrible things, claiming that his brother never cared about him and that he's already dead. Yugi, on the other hand, he's just mostly pissed that someone stole his deck. Seriously, man, you steal someone's cards around Yugi and you'll be lucky to leave that duel alive. Don't believe me? <laughs> just keep watching the series. Yugi Moto has friends. Some of them are paying attention. Some of them aren't. Can you guess which ones? That ghost don't even look like Kaiba. I mean, it's not a ghost and it's not Kaiba. Get him, Yugi! Apparently this ghost has star chips to make sure that this duel is official. It's like, wow, I could have left my star chips at home before I crossed the threshold of the afterlife, but it's like, oh shit, I forgot them, so I guess we can have a duel now, sorry. Starting the duel with the Hotatsumi Giant, the same move that Kaiba made in episode one. Surely no other person in the entire world has this basic shitty monster. Yugi then gives no fucks and summons the Dark Magician right away, destroying the Hotatsumi Giant and almost ending the duel in a about one turn. Even though he's currently losing this duel, fake Kaiba starts talking shit, claiming that Yugi has no chance to win without Exodia. Are we sure this isn't... Are we sure this is a ghost? Miraculously, no, as we see the real Kaiba saying outside of this mansion... Wh wh what the hell is this music? <laughs> Seriously, they played that song for a minute and 20 seconds of the episode. How do I not remember it at all? <laughs> the computer blew screen immediately. This sassy ass computer that we're never actually told if it's a real person on the other side talking or not apparently has an entire WWE promo worth of material to show Kaiba before they even begin. In season one, even Kaiba admits that Yugi is unbeatable because he has Exodia. Ha! Ah, Exodia! No one's ever been able to summon him before. I don't know where that came from. The computer, also known as Sassy Dumb Bitch, explains the last eight episodes to Kaiba all in about 15 seconds. Before we finally cut back to that exciting duel. You know, that exciting duel where after about 10 frickin' minutes we're finally on turn two as the blue eyes white dragon is summoned. Not having a real body isn't so bad. You would not believe what I save in food bills alone. I'm sorry, but after 54 seasons of The Walking Dead, we've seen what happens to the vast majority of us once we become undead. And I don't know about any of you, but when I'm undead, I'm a still be fucking hungry. So naturally, this supercomputer hidden inside a secret bat cave created by a billion dollar company has to load like it's a file transfer from Windows 98 just to allow Kaiba to start hacking. Every computer has a back door if you know where to look. Naturally, alpha males like Kaiba and myself understand the importance of advocating for the back door. Unfortunately for Kaiba, all of Yugi's data is heavily protected, so he's unable to access the flow of information from Duel's kingdom to the satellite that he somehow has a real-time view of back down to the mainframe computer in California at Industrial Illusions. All centered around trying to access the Dark Magician, because tuning into this duel that's lasted maybe two turns is very important. Though because this is real life and not a kid's show, they are able to hack into the satellite with the ability to crash land it anywhere on Earth. Satellite impact in 10 seconds. Oh yes, I can see the headlines now. Japanese terrorist teenager, well, I guess we never, it's never really made clear. Acts an American satellite and crashes it into a large building on American soil in an attempt to view a card game tournament, leaving over 700 fatalities and thousands injured. More at 11. Back to the duel still on turn frickin' two, Kaiba chooses not to attack with his blue eyes, instead laying a trap and ending his turn. A move that makes perfect sense because it forces Yugi to go on the defensive, which is apparently what Kaiba wanted all along, even though he could have just attacked last turn and got a better result both times. You played right into my hand. Defense paralysis. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that stopped defense. Imagine magic card, not defense paralysis, a trap card. 
Why even change it if you're not going to follow the rules in the first place? Doppelkaiba finally attacks with his blue eyes, destroying the Curse of Dragon and inflicting a thousand points of damage to Yugi. Which makes me realize that this is the first duel in the entire series that's actually following the rules life point wise at least. You know, if I had realized all computer hacking software was secretly just a puzzle maze game from Sega Genesis, I would have chosen a different career path a long time ago. Then Kaiba says the same thing that Donald Trump said to himself the first time he heard about Corona. So, a virus. A good one. Anything related to the information of Yugi seems to give Kaiba the symptoms of a virus, which ironically just kind of becomes his normal lifestyle later on in life. So when all else fails, of course all you have to do is overlay this gif of a stick of dynamite and voila, you've entered the water temple. But first you must get past this steel door. It's the ultimate defense! The ultimate defense. Oh wait, never mind, the password's just Pegasus. God. You gotta admit, for a stiff, this Kaiba sure got game. I'm not really sure why Kimo's talking up the cheek slaying skills of a ghost, but next time I go out to a club, I sure as hell know who I'm bringing as my wingman. Yugi activates magical hats for the first time, super confident that this basic combo will work, even though I'm pretty sure he forgot to lay down a trap before he ended his turn. The episode ends with maybe, probably, possibly, maybe, I'm not really sure if it's a fake Kaiba declaring an attack on one of the hats. Oh shit, guys, it's turn four. Well, that's it for this week's episode. I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed all the content, don't forget all that interactive shit. Share with a buddy or two that's just never actually seen how pointy Kimo's hair is. Tune in next week where we get to see the thrilling conclusion of a duel that may last six turns. Huh. Still pretty much longer than most ranked games on Master Duel. And of course, a shout out to all my patrons. If you'd like to support the channel and see some more episodes, alongside some nice benefits along the way, you know, feel free to sign up. I promise your life will get 7% better within 24 hours. This has been the man from Earth with all the girls, ladies and gentlemen. Be the king. <laughs> Fuck my hair, dude. Do something. The computer, also known as Sassy Dom Bitch, explains the entirety of the last ep episode. <laughs> Eight episodes. Go spending it. <laughs> Mokuba is very upset that this. Mokuba is very upset that this. <laughs> God damn it. Naturally, I'll. <coughs> Fuck my voice, really? Back to the duel, still on turn frickin' tool, Kaiba. Turn frickin' tool. And of course, a shout out to all my patrons. If you'd like to support the channel and have your name up up here, up 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 here.